If you're bored playing rhythm over one chord because you can't break free from it, we're going to take a look at some simple steps to bring things to life, and any soloist you're laying it down for will definitely thank you. So let's take a look at some really common jamming situations. The first one is G mixolydian. And so this works in other keys as well, but we're just gonna use G for our example. So a real common jamming situation is just playing over a G7 chord, right? And so if we wanna break out of there, the first thing we can try is playing triad. So just a G triad, so triad meaning three notes here, right? And you can do this one and this one here. So different ones give you a different sound, especially that note on top. It's like you kind of hear that as the melody. You can even slide into it, right? So but let's just hear how that stuff sounds against a backing track with just a bass and drums to hear how each one really has its own sound. So again, that kind of frees us up. We can slide things around even with just those two chords, right? Now, if we want to add on a dominant seven, which often, if you're jamming over a major chord, you can add this. It doesn't always work, but I strongly recommend just try it out. Don't worry about mistakes. This is how your ear can get better by just trying things out and listening to it. So let's just look at these real quick, and then we'll give these a listen as well with the track to hear how they sound in a more of a real musical situation. So we're adding on the flat seven, what they call the dominant seven. So in this case, F, two frets lower than G. So this is the first one, then you can put it up higher, so it's up here, and then this one, you add it on, same one there, and then this one, you can put it back here. So four different ways. And I'm gonna go real quick with this stuff because uh, I don't wanna put anyone to sleep, right? We're gonna move through quick, and if you want to, and you can pause things, go back, listen to it again, and I also, on my Patreon page, I'll have the PDF with all the stuff written out and the backing tracks that we're gonna be listening to so you can try it out yourself. So I'll put a link in the description down below if you wanna check that out. But let's listen to how these sound with the track. So now we're starting to get a lot of options. We've got six different things already. This one, this one, and then adding the sevenths here, 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 right? And we can move these all around, slide them around, things like that, add, add on a, like this, a little hammer on too. That kind of stuff can really spice things up. But let's start getting outside of just G. What if we play a C triad right here, right? And then what if we play a little variation? We could do it up here, but we could do it A minor like this, just because it's a little smoother, right? Now let's hear how those sound with the track. So this is where, you know, we're, we're mixing things up and we can really look at, you know, analyze, okay, what is this in relation to the G? You know, how does this all sound? Is it sus now, that note? Doesn't even matter, let's just not bog down our minds with all this theory. If you want to sit down and, and look at each note and think about that stuff, and it is very useful, and you can really listen to how each note sounds, um, you know, as well. But let's just say, hey, it works, you know? But you have to, you know, be the judge too. If the situations you want to try, if you play with a band, does it work? Who knows? Try it out. It's the only way you're gonna know for sure. So now we've got that C chord, right? Kind of nice, kind of gives it some tension to resolve it there. And then we've got this, a minor here, bring it down to the G. We tried that way, so now you can, we got options, we can start mixing and matching a lot. But let's look at one more option, and that is adding a B flat. So what they call flat third. This one here, and then we can do here. We're gonna do two options here. So again, let's listen to how that sounds with the track. So now you got so many options. You got this here, all that kind of stuff. And again, you can just mix and match. You can start to get really musical. I mean, it's so different than just, just laying this down, right, like that. Now we can do things like, right? And now you're getting melodic 
And you can use this stuff for soloing yourself too. But if you're backing up a soloist, you can start listening to them and kind of going with them. You can start doing this. Maybe they're listening to you and, and you're giving them inspiration, but you've got movement. You've got melody you can throw in there rather than just being stuck, you know? So it really, really opens things up. So let's give a quick listen to hearing all this stuff kind of put together with the track and then we'll try out another example. Now let's say we're looking at another common situation that's jamming over a Dorian mode and it's very similar to playing over the Mixolydian but you have a flat third instead of a major one so it works over a minor chord so say we're doing G minor you can also do a G minor 7 to jazz it up even more and you can also look at this as just like the minor scale but with instead of a flat six, a raised six. So in both cases, it's just one note difference and it's just two different ways of looking at it. It's like the same coin, two different sides. But don't get bogged down on this. Don't worry if you're confused by it. Just think that when you're jamming on a minor situation, this is very common, the sound that's, that's gonna kind of work. So now let's take this G minor, let's go up, let's mix it up, do, do it in C minor, just, just, just kind of, you know, just to vary it up. So, we can do all the same stuff we did before. We can play this C minor, make it a C minor 7, right? That's kind of our, oh, this is our bass chord, right? But now we can take a triad, and if we do C major, all we have to do is lower this major third right here, and this is an E in this case, by one fret. And for everything in here, we just lower that third to a minor third if there is one in there. So now you just do this, same thing here instead of this, We've got that. So you got that triad, you've got that triad, right? And then we can add a seventh, so you can get this, can do this one, can do this one, can do this one, right? So it's all the same stuff, just that one note change. And now we can also add this um, chord right here, and that works great to that, right? And then we can also add this one here. Oh, that stuff all works great. Then we can even add this one right here. That just becomes an E flat major. And all that stuff works great. But let's take it a little further. Let's add something that I like to do um, in all kinds of musical situations, but especially when minor ones, and that is adding chordal harmony. Not chordal, but chordal with a Q. So that is like this. We're just doing these two spots. And uh, let's give it a quick listen to hear how it sounds with the track, and then I'll sh show you what's going on with it. So what that means is that you're playing in fourths. So like quarto meaning fourths. So fourths the interval. So from one note up to the next, you're going up a fourth. They call it perfect fourth in this case. And then anything that even be all fourths, but in this case it is. Um, but as long as there's like a lot in there, kind of gives you this different sound. So you go up a fourth, up another fourth, because these strings are tuned differently, the shape changes here, but you got that, and then over here, you're just going up the next three strings, and that gives you a very different, very kind of spacey sound. So that's something that you know great you can you can add in there. Let's hear how it sounds kind of putting all this together with the track and see what we can do with it. So 
So if this stuff has been helpful to kind of opening up your ears and your eyes, just remember it's just the tip of the iceberg, but if it's also overwhelming, I've got a link in the description down below to my Patreon page where you can get the chart and the backing tracks and you can take your time to really let this stuff sink in and really make it a part of your plan. You can try to take it even further and try out different things with those tracks as well. And if you're right now just looking like, hey, I wanna know some more stuff about this and how do I apply it to my lead playing? Well, check out this video right here. It's from my series called Out Versus In, where we take the same stuff here of these chords like this and apply it to a lead playing situation. So check it out and see what you can do with it.